Hello students, today we will discuss about the osteology of scapula. There are two videos on this bone, is, today is the part 1, the next video will have the remaining part of the scapula. Now when you will see the scapula, you all know that scapula is also known as shoulder blade. Now it is known as blade because it is a flat bone and you see the shape, it is a triangular in shape. So when you will dealing with the scapula, you have to keep this thing in mind that it is a triangular flat bone which is present on the posterolateral aspect of thorax. Now what is the meaning of this word posterolateral? It is not purely posterior but it is also having the lateral component. Now this is the superior view of your chest wall. Here you can see that this is the scapula and it is following the curvature of your ribs. Now what does it mean that this scapula is accommodating the outer convexity of the ribs and that's why it is not purely placed posteriorly but it is posterolateral in placement. It lies against second to seventh rib. Now in this diagram, you can see that this is your first rib. Then you will have the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh rib. So this is the upper part of your scapula and this is the lower part of the scapula. So vertically, if you will see, it is lying against the second to seventh rib. Now, how to determine the side of this bone? You know that scapula is a paired bone. So whenever we are having the paired bone, we have to identify the right and left side. So when you will see the scapula, the most important thing is the glenoid cavity, which is going to make a joint with the head of humerus. And you know that humerus comes from the lateral side and going to make a joint with the glenoid cavity of the scapula, which is known as shoulder joint. So logically you have to keep this glenoid cavity laterally or outside so that the humerus can come to articulate. So the first point is that glenoid cavity always should be on the lateral aspect. Then the second thing is that when you will see the scapula which is a flat plate like structure, it is having the two surface. Now one surface is having a projection and that projection is present on the posterior aspect. Why? Because again the logic says that if you will see this diagram, I am saying that the scapula is lying against this your chest wall. Now once the scapula is lying against the chest wall, this projection cannot come anteriorly. Now if this projection or the posterior dorsally placed spinous process comes in the contact with the chest wall, then there has to be a gap. So, but you can see that there is no gap between the scapula and the chest wall. The scapula moves smoothly against the chest wall. So, this projection which is here is always on the posterior aspect of the bone and this is known as dorsal surface of the bone. And this surface which is in the contact with the ribs is known as costal surface or anterior surface of the bone. So, the first point for the side determination is that glenoid cavity plays laterally. The second point is that dorsal surface identified by the presence of a spinous process and this process will remain on the posterior side and this process divides the whole dorsal surface into the supraspinous and infraspinous fossa. Supraspinous means above the spinous process and infraspinous means below the spinous process. So when you are doing the side determination, the first thing is that you have to keep this glenoid cavity laterally. Second thing is the dorsal surface identified by the this spinous projection or the spinous process on the dorsal surface. Then the third point is that there are three borders because it is a triangular plate. So you can see that this is the one border, this is the second border and this is the third border. Now when you are holding this, 
we already make this glenoid cavity on the lateral side. So, this border become lateral border. This become the medial border of the scapula and this become the superior border of the scapula. So, when you will see the three border of this triangle, you will realize that the lateral border is the thickest border. So, what are the point of identification for the side determination? The glenoid cavity should be laterally. Second thing is the dorsal surface identified by the presence of a spinous process which is going to divide the dorsal surface into the supra and infraspinous fossa. Third thing is that the lateral border is the thickest border of the scapula and the fourth is that there is an angle which is highly acute is the inferior angle. Now here because it is a triangular plate so you can see this is the lateral angle, this is the inferior angle this is the superior angle and out of these three the inferior angle is the acute angle which always faces downward. So, by these three four points you are able to identify that is it a right side scapula or my left side scapula. Now, once you are sure about the side determination the second thing comes is anatomical position. Now, what does it mean? Anatomical position means that how the bone lies in our own body. So, once you are confirmed with the side of the scapula, you have to hold the bone in such a way that glenoid cavity directed forward and slightly upward and laterally. Now, what is the meaning? Now, the same thing which you have to understand here that our ribs are having the curvature. So, the scapula is following the outer curvature of the rib. Now, suppose if my ribs are not curved, they are angulated in such a way, then my scapula will come exactly on the posterior side of my rib cage. But when you will see the presentation, you will realize that this curvature of the rib is actually followed by the bone. So, bone is not exactly posteriorly placed and it is following the curvature of the rib. So, but obviously the glenoid cavity is comes laterally and forward. It is not only the posterior, it, if it is posterior then the rib has to be the in this form of angulation. But there is a curvature and because they are following the curvature of the ribs, this scapula will fit on the curvature of the rib. So, the scapula is coming forward and laterally, clear? So, there are two things, one is the side determination, second thing is anatomical position. So, for the anatomical position, you have to keep scapula in such a way that it is facing forward and laterally. You cannot hold vertically because it is following the curvature of ribs, clear? Now, the surface landmarks of the scapula. Now, when you will see the dorsum, when you will see the back, you will realize that you can palpate the inferior angle, we can palpate the medial border, root of spine and acromion process of scapula. Now, the inferior angle, inferior angle of the scapula lies at the seventh rib and if you are palpating the inferior angle, you are around at the level of 7th thoracic vertebral spine. Now, in this midline, you can see that this is the T1. Why it is T1? Because you can see the attachment of the first rib here. So, this is the first rib. Now, this is the second vertebra and this is the second rib. Now, this is the third vertebral spine, fourth thoracic vertebral spine, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth and so on. Now, we are talking about the inferior angle of the scapula. Now, this is the inferior angle of scapula. Now, this inferior angle lies on the seventh rib. Now, this is the seventh rib and this seventh rib is corresponding to this spine of your C7 thoracic vertebra because when you will see the thoracic vertebra, they are having the downward projection and the spine will go little bit lower level as compared to the body. So, this is the spine of C7. Now, it is not at the level of T8. It looks like T8, but the spine is projecting downward. So, this is the spine of your T7 vertebra. 
So, when you are palpating the inferior angle, if you draw the horizontal line, you can feel the tip of the seventh thoracic vertebral spine. The second thing is medial border. Now, this is the medial border of your scapula. Now, this medial border is parallel to the vertebral column. That's why this medial border is also known as vertebral border of the scapula. And this border, which is extending from second rib to the seventh rib, can also be considered in term of the vertebral label from second thoracic to the seventh thoracic vertebra. Then the next is the root of the spine. Now, what do you mean by the root of the spine? Now, this is the spinous process of your scapula. Now, this medial part is known as root of the spine. Now, this root of the spine is presented by a triangular area. Now, this triangular area, which is known as root of the spine, lies against the T3 or third thoracic vertebra. So, if you will see, this is the 1, 2, 3. So, this is the second and this is the third. So, again, when you will see the spine, I told you the spines are longer than the vertebra. So, what vertebral column comes is T3 spine. Then, you have the acromion process. Now, acromion process can be felt here. Now, this bony projection which you are able to feel on the top of your shoulder is nothing but this is the tip of your acromion process of scapula. So, these are the important bony landmark which you have to keep in mind while you are examining the patient. Now, what are the important features of the scapula? Now, scapula is having a body and it is having the three processes. Now, what are the features of the body? The body of a scapula is triangular and has the following feature. Now, you can see that this is the triangular body of a scapula. Now, in this triangle, you are having the two surfaces. Now, this is the dorsal surface. Why it is dorsal surface? Because you can see this projection which is known as spinous process. And spinous process is always a feature of posterior or dorsal surface. So, this is the surface which is facing posteriorly and the surface which is facing anteriorly towards the rib cage is known as ventral surface or costal surface of scapula. Then the next is the borders. Now, you will find the three borders. One border is on the lateral aspect, one border is on the medial side and one border is on the superior side. So, there are three borders superior border, medial border and lateral border. Now, there are three angles. Now, what are the angles? Superior angle, inferior angle and lateral angle because it is a triangular plate. So, what, where are the angles? Now, this will become the lateral angle, this will become superior angle and this will become inferior angle of your scapula. So, the line between the superior angle, the line between the superior angle and inferior angle is become the medial border. The area between the lateral angle and inferior angle become the lateral border which is the thickest one and between the superior and lateral angle you will have superior border. On the lateral angle you are having the glenoid cavity which is going to make a joint that is the shoulder joint. Now, there are three processes of the scapula. Now, what are these three processes? Now, one process is known as acromion process. Now, acromion process is prominent process which you are able to see here. Now, this is the acromion process. Now, this process is having superior surface and inferior surface. Now, on the dorsal side, this acromion process continue with a triangular plate of the process which is known as a spinous process. Apart from that, there is a one more projection from the anterior side which is known as coracoid process. So, this is coracoid process. Now, when you will see the processes, you will realize that the acromion process is having a small facet on the inner side for articulation with the clavicle and that is going to form acromioclavicular joint. So, this is the acromion process. So, the joint is known as acromio 
clavicular joint. So now this has become the question of your exam that clavicle is going to make a joint with which part of the scapula? Answer is acromion process. Clear? So this is the dorsal surface or the posterior view of the scapula. This is the anterior or ventral view of the scapula. How to identify? You can see that this surface is not having any kind of the pro projection and the projection is always a feature of dorsal or posterior surface of scapula. Now, what are the important thing about the costal surface? Now, when you will see the costal surface, which is also known as the ventral surface or anterior surface, or it is also known as subscapular fossa. Now, this is again the important thing to understand that because it is the uh, surface inside the scapula, that's why the word is subscapular, means below the scapula. Now, in this subscapular fossa, or the ventral surface, you are having a origin of a big muscle is known as subscapularis. Now, this surface is concave and it is directed medially forward. Now, again the question comes is that this surface is not purely forward. Now, if it is purely forward, then the scapula always remain on the posterior side. But the scapula is forward. When you will see the glenoid cavity anatomical position, we have seen that the scapula is placed forward and outward. So the this cavity, when you will see the cavity, once you will hold in anatomical position, this cavity is facing medially as well as forward. It is not purely forward, it comes forward and medially. So this is why the word medially is written here, which is again the important concept to understand. Now, this part is important. Whenever you are dealing with the ventral or the costal surface of the scapula, you are going to see 4 to 5 oblique lines or the ridges. Now, these oblique lines or the ridges which are very prominent on this costal surface are for the tendons or intramuscular septas of subscapularis muscle. Now, when you are talking about the multipinnate muscle, now multipinnate muscles means the muscles those are having the intramuscular septas or the tendons. So, the more number of fibers can be accommodate in that muscle. So, one of the example is subscapularis. So, the ridges give, give rise to the subscapularis muscle from the intramuscular tendon and it gives this muscle multipinnate appearance. So, it is a powerful muscle. The multipinnate means the muscle become more powerful and the question comes is what is the purpose of these ridges or the lines present on the costal surface of scapula? Answer is to give attachment to the intramuscular tendons or septas of subscapularis. Then there is a one more important thing is the subscapular bursa. Now you have to keep this thing in mind that the muscle is not arising from the whole surface. The muscle is arising from the medial two-third of the surface. Now this medial two-third is giving origin to your subscapularis except this border. The border is also not giving the origin. Now here you can see that this border of your scapula, you can see this is the medial border of scapula. Now, this border is occupied by some other muscle is known as serratus anterior. Now, this area is also spared. This is actually the inner side or you can say the medial aspect of this head or lateral angle of the scapula. So, the subscapularis is present only in this much of green area and here you are having the bursa and that bursa present here to prevent the friction between the tendon of subscapularis and inner side of the lateral angle of scapula. So, subscapularis bursa separates the lateral most part of the costal surface or you can say the neck of scapula. So, this lateral angle area is known as neck of scapula. So, on the inner side of the neck of scapula, there is a bursa which prevent the friction between the tendon of subscapularis muscle and the bone. Now, here in this diagram, if you will see, 
you are able to understand that this is the subscapularis origin. And here we have removed the anteriorly placed ribs. So after removing the ribs, you are able to see the subscapularis muscle, which is arising and going towards the humerus. And you know, here you are having a projection is known as lesser tubercle. So muscle is inserting on the lesser tubercle. But in this part, deep to this area, there is a bursa is present and that bursa is known as subscapular bursa. Clear? Now, in this diagram, you can see that this is the inferior view of your shoulder joint. Now, this is the dorsal surface, you can see the spine and this is your lateral angle or you can see the neck of the your scapula and deep to that, you can see this green color bursa. And this bursa is, lies between the muscle and the bone and this bursa prevent the friction between the tendon of the subscapularis and your lateral angle of the scapula. So this is the important question for your exam. Where is the subscapular bursa placed? Answer is near the lateral angle of scapula on its costal surface. Now, what are the other features or the other muscles attached on the costal surface? Serratus anterior muscle. Now, this border which left here, now this area left on the inner side of your costal surface. This medial border is having the costal surface as well as the dorsal surface. Now this border is receiving the serratus anterior in a fixed pattern. Now what is the pattern? That lower 5 to 6 digits insert on the oval area near the inferior angle. So this is the inferior angle. Now here you are having the insertion of lower 5 to 6 digitations or the slips of serratus anterior along with the medial border. Then you are having the remaining insertion on the ventral aspect or the costal side of the medial border. So this is here you are having the first digitation, here you are having the second and third digitation and here you are having the remaining digitation. Clear? So this medial border on the costal surface occupied by the serratus anterior, this two-third area of the costal surface occupied by subscapularis and this inner side of the lateral angle or I should say the neck is occupied by bursa of subscapularis muscle. Then in this diagram, you have to keep one thing in mind that we have talked about the two muscle. One is serratus anterior and another is subscapularis. Now my dear students, this is my sincere suggestion that whenever you are doing the dissection in this area, you try to pass your finger between these two muscles. Now what you are able to find here that serratus anterior which arises from the lateral chest wall will go posteriorly and it will insert on the medial border of the scapula. But on the remaining part of the medial surface of the scapula, the muscle is coming from outside to insert on this lesser tubercle. So there has to be a gap between these two muscles here. So if you will pass your finger between the serratus anterior and subscapularis, if I will pass my finger here in this space, I will go posteriorly, but my finger will stuck posteriorly because you are receiving the insertion of serratus anterior. So you can go along with the lateral chest wall as much as you can. And once you will go posteriorly, your this palmar surface is facing towards the serratus anterior and the dorsal surface of the fingers are in, in contact with the subscapularis. And your tips will reach till the insertion of serratus anterior. So this you should try to uh, examine, you should try to do this in the dissection so that you will realize the difference between the subscapularis and serratus anterior. Now, the dorsal surface gave attachment to the self-like spinous process and I told you that this spinous process is the identification between the dorsal and your costal surfaces. And this uh, spinous process divides the dorsal surface into the supra and infraspinous fossa. 
Now, apart from that, you are having one important notch on the posterior surface is spinoglenoid notch. Now, in this diagram, you can see that this is the spinoglenoid notch. This is the spine and this is the glenoid. So, the notch is known as spinoglenoid notch of scapula. Now, this uh, spinous process is dividing the fossa into the supra and infra spinous fossa and these both fossas are communicating through this spinoglenoid notch. So, a nerve is coming and it is passing through this notch and entering into the infraglenoid fossa. So, supra and infraglenoid fossa are communicating with each other with the help of this spinoglenoid notch. This notch is located at the lateral of the spine and this is the important question for your exam that which structures are passing through this notch. So, there are two structures which will pass through this notch. One is known as suprascapular nerve and another is suprascapular vessels or you can say artery. Now, in these two diagram, you have to understand the course of suprascapular nerve. Now, here you can first see where is the notch. Now, the notch is here. Now, here you can see that this is the suprascapular nerve. Now, this nerve after taking origin from the brachial plexus, the nerve is going posteriorly and it is passing through this suprascapular notch. Now, this suprascapular notch is a very important feature of the superior border of scapula. Now, after passing through this notch, the nerve is going towards the spinoglenoid notch. And when the nerve is approaching the spinoglenoid notch, it comes out in the infraspinous fossa. So, this is supraspinous fossa and this is infraspinous fossa. So, you can appreciate that the suprascapular nerve is entering into the infraspinous fossa through this spinoglenoid notch. Now, here you can see that this nerve is giving one branch and it is also giving branch here. Now, you know that there are two muscles. Here you have supraspinatus, here you have infraspinatus. So, both these muscles supplied by suprascapular nerve. So, here in this diagram, you can see that this nerve is approaching to the supraspinous fossa and here you are having the supraspinatus. So, first the nerve will give branch to the supraspinatus, then this will come out through this supra, uh, this spinoglenoid notch and once it will pass through this spinoglenoid notch, it enters into the infraspinous fossa and here you will have the infraspinatus, clear? So, this is very commonly asked question in your exam that what is the nerve supply of supraspinatus and infraspinatus? Answer is suprascapular nerve and the second question is which structure is passing through this spinoglenoid notch? Answer is supraescapular nerve. Now, here the nerve is not visible. Why it is not visible? Because I told you that nerve is going to supply the muscles from its deep surface. So, the nerve as soon as it will enter into the supraspinous fossa, it supplies supraspinatus. Then it enters here into the infraspinous fossa where you are having the origin of infraspinatus. So, the nerve is not visible because it is going to supply these muscles from their deeper or inner side. Now, supraspinatus muscle originate from the medial two-third of supraspinous fossa and infraspinatus arises from medial two-third of infraspinous fossa. So, what are the muscles present on the dorsal surface of the scapula? Supraspinatus and infraspinatus and both of the muscles supplied by suprascapular nerve. Now, there is a one more attachment on the dorsal surface and that is latissimus dorsi muscle. Now, this latissimus dorsi is basically a muscle in the lower back on the posterior aspect and this muscle comes from the lower six spines of the thoracic region, but a small portion of the latissimus dorsi arises from this posterior part of the inferior angle of the scapula. 
Now, this is the inferior angle of the scapula. You can see that the major origin comes from the lower thoracic spine. But once the muscle will take origin, it will go laterally. And when the muscle is going laterally, its upper part is overlapping this small area of the scapula, which is actually the dorsal surface of inferior angle of scapula. Then, in this video, we can see the different orientation or the features of the scapula. Now, when you will see this, this is your costal surface. Now, this costal surface is showing this area is the subscapular area for the subscapularis muscle. Now, this is the superior angle. Now, this is your dorsal surface of the scapula. This dorsal surface is having this spinous process. So, above that you have supraspinous fossa. Below that you have infraspinous fossa. Now, this is the inferior angle of your scapula. This is your lateral angle of scapula, which is also known as the neck of scapula. And inner side of the neck, you are having the bursa. Now, this is your lateral border of the scapula, which is extending from the lateral angle to the inferior angle. And this lateral border is the thickest. Now, this is the medial border of the scapula. This medial border is from the superior angle to the inferior angle of the scapula. And on the inner side of the inferior angle, you are having the insertion of serratus anterior. This is the superior angle of scapula. And from the superior angle, you are having the superior border. And superior border is having a very important feature, which is known as suprascapular notch. And through this suprascapular notch, you are having the entry of suprascapular now and suprascapular artery. And these vessels are not coming on the anterior side, but the suprascapular nerve and vessels are going posteriorly or dorsally, and then they will pass through the spinoglenoid notch. So, at the end of this class, now you are able to see the gross features of the scapula. Basically, you have to understand how to differentiate the dorsal surface and the costal surface. You should know about the difference between the anatomical position and the side determination of the bone. You should know about the muscles, those are attached on the costal surface, muscles attached on the dorsal surface. And the most important thing is what is the, uh, how the supraspinatus and infraspinatus supplied by suprascapular nerve. So this is all for this part one. We'll see you in the part two of this bone. Thank you.